Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. BoxingVoice.com. What broke him down? Was it the body punching? I was getting the body punching. I heard him actually crying there. You were saying that Big was crying when you hit him? Yes. When when did that happen? And he clapped the fourth round on. Boxingboys.com. So that you knew you had him by that time. Absolutely, but I knew you were fucking with taking those punches. Making women dresses like, oh, oh, oh. Let's go, champ. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another immediate reaction. Today, we're going to be talking some fighters across the pond. You know, Chris Eubank Jr. definitely making some headlines by being one of the first fighters to come back on ITV. Uh, so we have to talk about it. The performance was definitely a spectacular one. Could we use such synonyms when speaking about this fight, especially with this level of opposition? I don't know. But if this is something that you're interested in, you know the number, one 569 5241 You'll be getting my immediate reaction, post-fight thoughts. Chris Eubank Jr. calls out multiple big-name fighters. Stick around. International callers, add Nestor Gibbs on Skype. Let's get this one going. Man, I mean, uh, it was definitely a good performance by Chris Eubank. I don't know how much can we take out of this fight, being as though we never heard of Reginald Quinlan. He did pretty good. I know there's a lot of detractors of the Eubank family, but what has to be said is at the end of the day, Chris Eubank was a 160-pounder. He moved up to 168, and he fared his own with 168 pounder. He took the 168 pounder shots well, and he gave that 168 pounder some decent shots. So much so that he ended up getting the stoppage. Um, ultimately, I mean, we see the same Chris Eubank that we've always seen. One that's very high active output. Um, he has when when in the ring, but but still just a little bit wild. Obviously. You know, in this particular fight, um, his wildness didn't catch up to him because of level of opposition. But, um, you know, he's calling out names like Golovkin, and he's he, he still today said that he's going to get the remaining teeth of James DeGale. You know, he wants those big names like Billy Joe Saunders so he could avenge that loss, but I'm just not sure. Um, I don't know, man. I... If he's going to be standing in the pocket with Golovkin like that, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, it's just, uh, you know, a thing that we need to um, stick around and, and follow his career and see what happens. I know that a lot of people don't hold much weight on this IBO title, but it can be used, I guess, as some sort of, you know, negotiation tool. Now that he's done um, a successful pay-per-view on ITV, We'll see, is that going to be enough to entice other fighters to come and fight him on I, uh, TV? You know, he he mentioned those names that he did, and he mentioned having the, pra the platform. Now, we won't know how well this pay-per-view did. What I can tell you is that there were 100,000 people watching it on a Facebook live stream illegally. That's That's got to hurt the pay-per-view buys, sells. Um, there were also about 9,700 on the stream that I was watching, which was on a YouTube live stream. So listen, man, this thing, while people did not want to buy it, they were definitely watching it. You know, 50,000 only bought Terrence Crawford and Victor Postal. We got 100,000 watching this one on Facebook. So I don't know, man. A lot of people say, oh, Chris Eubank isn't popular. He's not any good. He's a shit fighter. Well, I don't see him getting stopped. He really, he really made Reginald Quillen look like he wasn't class. So I, I, I just don't know, man. Um, 
We got a caller here. We're going to jump out to the phone lines. Remember, if you want to get your take, you want to talk about this fight, you want to give me your post-fight reactions, the number to call in is 1425-569-5241. International callers, just add Nesta Gibbs on Skype. Come here to YouTube. You can see the spelling of the name right here on the overlay. You can see the phone number right here on the overlay. We're talking immediate reaction. Chris Eubank, after eight months, looking sensational. Again, was it the level of opposition? And I want to know, who paid for this? 562, you're live on TBV. We're talking Reginald Quinlan losing his IBO title to Chris Eubank Jr. Talk to me. What are your thoughts? Hey, Ness, it's Matt. What's up, Matt, man? what's going on, brother? The producer. I know, it's, I know, I'm I know. I'm good, man. I watched the fight. Um, it's the, the stream was not that great, so I didn't see you know, all the action, obviously, because it kept cutting out, it kept freezing. Um, but there are streams galore. There are streams everywhere. To me, that that's an issue for ITV. They need to cut down on that, especially when they're going to make make people pay for it. If there's options just to watch it on YouTube live, you know that kind of hurts the business out of it. But I thought the fight was just sort of lackluster. I thought uh, Chris Eubanks' power did not translate to one six eight. Um, I thought the David Price hammer fight was just atrocious. And then they kept throwing four rounders in between the fights, even when it was going past schedule. So I, I think ITV had some, had some rough uh, goings with this first pay-per-view. Hopefully the next one's better. Hopefully the next card is better. Um, but I, I would like to see Chris Eubank versus like a Peter Quillen next or something like that. Uh, another 160 guy moving up. You know, I would like to see that instead of him going up against a James DeGale or a Callum Smith or any of those top guys. I don't think he's ready for that, I want to say. Now, I, 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 I need to ask you, man, uh, what exactly was it about this fight that um, has you saying it wasn't any good? I thought there was plenty of excitement going on. I thought that, um, you know, these guys were definitely exchanging good blows. Uh, Eubank put on a performance without a doubt. Damn, the link you sent me and the one that I watched is already taken down, huh? <laughs> and uh, it's, it's not that the fight was, in a sense, unentertaining. The fight was just an apparent mismatch from skill. And even though Quinlan had a great chin, he took the shots, and he was able to stay in the pocket because of that and throw back, there was, there was a huge skill discrepancy between the two guys. So whenever that happens to me, it makes the fight uninteresting, um, just by default. Um, you know, Chris Eubank didn't lose a single round. You know, that's boring to me, in, in a sense. You know, I want to see a little more competitiveness. Now, I do understand it's his first fight, 168, so I kind of give him a pass for that. Um, but I would like to see something better in the next outing because that, that, to me, Chris Eubank went in there and thought he was going to just wreck this guy. Fought lazy. His defense was lazy at times. And uh, I think that sort of caught him in, in the ass because he, he wasn't able to put this guy out in four rounds. You know, he was still there. And then it, it made Chris Eubank sort of look mediocre at times, in my opinion. I don't know. I just was kind of off. I think you're being overly critical. This guy moved up in weight. He still got the stoppage. He was super duper active. You know, he made the fight entertaining. He definitely made the fight in the sense that he was coming forward and and definitely being the the aggressor. I think you're overly critical because Eubank and his father. You know, they're obviously in the media a lot. They talk a lot of trash and. People, I guess, are expecting a little more, wanting a little more. But this was a solid, solid performance. Now, again, you know, someone could easily go and say, hey, Ness, man, you're giving this guy far too much credit. You know, um, Reginald Quillen, no one knows him. You know, I mean, who the fuck is that guy? But this is who we had to watch him <laughs> fight. So at the end of the day, you know, we got to give him credit for who he fought. And uh, he looked good. He made his opponent look like he wasn't on his level, which we already knew. Mm -hmm. You know, we already knew he wasn't on the level. But, I mean, at the very least, he did what we expected. So many times do fighters come in here and we think they're going to win in a certain fashion. Like, you know, David Hay and Vladimir Klitschko. Everyone thought that was going to be a barn burner. And, I mean, we, we're, we're still talking about a toe a couple of years later. So, you know, everything doesn't always turn out to be the way that it's supposed to be. Thank God that um, Chris Eubank got the win in the fashion that he did because he, even for the haters, they can't hate on this. I mean, even you, you know, look, he was very active. He was throwing bombs. He was landing right hands at will. I, I, I don't see why the criticism on, on, on Junior. Uh, it's not... Maybe because the whole, like the, like the David uh, Price fight really was a huge turnoff. 
And I, I, I don't know, maybe the card overall made me really critical of the whole thing, and I had a sour taste in my mouth on you being fight. That's possible. Um, but hold on, Santiago wants to get in and get his two cents because he watched the fight too. I'm with Santiago, so here's Santiago. Yeah, hello. Santiago, what's going yeah, on, brother? What did you I'm, think of these fights? Well, I, I, of the Eubank <laughs> fight, obviously. Obviously. No, I'm pretty much of the same opinion as Mac here. I mean, you know, obviously I'm always for boxing, but at this point I was looking forward more to him coming over and watching the UFC fight on Fox Sports than anything else. Because honestly, that fight, I was just watching it kill time. All he was was an opponent. That was it, you know. You know, he was he was he was a live body, you know, heavy bag. That was it, game over, you know. I'm looking forward to having a pizza and drinking some vodka over that. Listen, I like this guy. We need, a, we need a good villain in boxing, guys. I'll be back with you guys. Uh, thanks for calling in, Santiago and Matt. I heard you say that's pretty much all you got. I just want to say that I think we need a good villain in boxing. I like the way when he got the stoppage, the way he just stares at the at the crowd, you know, kind of slanted eyed, looking out the side in, in that very, you know, confident just stare it's not it doesn't do much it's just a look they both give the look you've seen it in the lead up to this fight right they played the little video the little you know 24 7 all access type of montage thing and they showed the comparisons the similarities to he and his fathers you know the characteristics that each other share i'm intrigued by you bank i love his speed i love his combination work i mean did you see the way he was landing that fucking uppercut and again this is Reginald Quinlan. We don't know how good he is, so we don't know how good Eubank looked, except that, you know, naked eye, he made this guy look like he doesn't belong in the ring. We're going to go across the pond to some of the guys on the other side over here. Uh, let's go to KVT. Talk to me, brother, my pound for pounder. How you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm good, Ness. How you doing, brother? Oh, man, enjoying the fights. I'm glad that you, Ben, could provide us with some excitement, you know? Us over here across the pond in the States, we didn't really have any boxing to watch today, not any big names. So I was happy that you, Ben, you know, uh, put on a, a good show, got the stoppage, and now I'm definitely interested in a James DeGale. I was hoping he was going to call out Andre Ward. The reason, you know, Andre Ward is right there. His father's talking about he would wreck yeah. Ward. Why not say something to Ward right fucking there, even if you don't mean it? But, you know, that's just me. Yeah, no, just congratulations to you, Bank. You know, like he he put on, like 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 Matt was saying, and I agree with him, and I agree with you. You know, it, the skill level and the, the difference in in the two guys is you could just tell. You know, and I was obviously I was going for um, Quinlan, but I was hoping that he would just something off the off the ropes or something that he would land, and that's what I think he was doing. He was he. It, he wasn't doing much. Like he was like he was looking for one shot. Um, but yeah, Eubank just his speed. He was just too quick. But you know, I'll always love Quinlan. He's got heart. He's tough. Straight after the fight, I think a lot of people. I was reading a few comments, you know, through um, the streams and on Facebook and that. And it's they're all bagging on his power. But you know, they don't understand that Quinlan's actually got a granite chin. So you know. And he's like you said, he was taken on a 168 pounder. So, you know, he's. I like you, mate. He's not, you know, he 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 brings that entertainment factor. He will move up, you know. He he is like a the villain, like you say. So people are gonna pay to watch him lose. Um, and the fact that he's gonna be calling out Triple G and all these other guys. If he if he goes in there with a triple G, the way he was leaping in with, um, I think he caught him caught Quinlan in the fourth round or something with that lead left hook, like, and then he done it a few other times. If he does that against you know a fighter that's got a bit more skill, they slip it and they count. He's gone. He's finished. So I don't know. I think he got a bit cocky in the end because he knew that the skill level was there was a, there was a big contrast. But yeah, still entertaining. Um, yeah, that's my call, man. All right, KBT, man. Thanks for calling in, brother. Um, I, You're not making it over this year, right? Not for the appreciation now, right? I wish I could, man. Right. It was a bit early in the year, right? Eh? No, no yeah, problem. No problem. Just making sure I don't got you confused because we got quite a few people, 
you know, coming from different parts of the world. I mean, and you're actually on the line with one of the guys that has solidified his travels. He's going to be coming. We actually did a show on the on the appreciation night, so you could go check that out, KBT and Muhammad as well. But Muhammad, talk to me about some boxing. A lot of people watching. They were also watching this Chris Eubank versus Reginald Quillen. He became some sort of champion. Some recognize the IBO. I mean, look, if you recognize Gennady as a champion, he had the IBO for as long as he had that WBA. What do you think about Chris Eubank Jr.'s performance over Reginald Quillen in this stoppage that he got? Man, yes, I agree with you 100%. We need a good villain, and he's playing the role to perfection. I mean, the eye test, he's looking good. Of course, we don't know how good he is exactly, but if he fights the girl, that's a, that's a nice stepping stone. Now, imagine he beats the girl, and then that's a big showdown with the Triple G. So I agree with you 100%. We need a good villain. I, I like the guy. I like the way he stares at the crowd. He's just cocky, you know, just like cold, you know. I, I like that. <laughs> Plus, his father is a character, so that's going to light up any press conference. So I think Chris Chubank right now is good for boxing. It's good for boxing. It's like some spice on a, on a meal, you know. Listen, taco or something, sorry. we Americans, right? If we leave it to the, 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 the people that call us Yanks, we've given Deontay Wilder tons of passes, right? He's 37 and 0. He's only faced one person. You know, why not allow Chris Eubank to get a couple of more guys like this that he could feed on, that, that he could, you know, build up that ITV platform before he rushes into a Golovkin um, fight, you know, because I, I think right now with Miguel Cotto out, maybe Billy Joe Saunders could be doing something with Miguel Cotto or even Kel Brook as, you know, anxious as Kel Brook and Eddie Hearn are sounding over there to, you know, have a sexy matchup with, 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 with Cotto. So, I mean, there's a lot of options here for Eubank and especially with that platform. I'm, re I'm really interested to see, could he entice Gennady Golovkin back across the pond? No, I agree with you. But I think before fighting Golovkin, he should fight the girl. I'm really interested in that because if he fights well, the girl, I, I we spoke know exactly to the girl, what man. Like. I spoke to the girl personally. And listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, just do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. It helps with the visibility of the show. If you don't want to do it, it's okay. But uh, if you want to help the show grow and get it in front of more eyes, just hit that thumbs up button. It helps with the visibility. I spoke to James DeGale personally, both on camera and off camera, and he said he would never fight him. I said, bro, but just fight him to teach him a lesson. Half of the UK don't even like him. You would actually gain fans if you beat him up good. He said, I would never give him a payday. He could never get, he said, I don't even recognize the IBO. He says, no one has ever had the IBO. They've always got it in conjunction with another title. He, he doesn't respect either Eubank, you know, he thinks they're delusional. Uh, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Hello. Hello. Yeah. You didn't hear any yes, of that. You hear me? I hear you loud and clear, Muhammad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, you just went away for a second. Yeah, I saw that interview you did with him. He was inside the ring training, right? I yeah. saw that. Uh, I saw it on Patreon, actually. Yep, yep. Yeah, he said that, but but come on, he cannot ignore Chris Eubank because now he's a name. He's arrogant. He's pre he, he's making his presence known. So he, at one point he he has to fight him. Plus, you know what uh, Eubank said? He said he's coming for the rest of the teeth. So you know you gotta address that. Hey, man. Hello? You're absolutely right. So the message has been sent. Chris Eubank to James DeGale. You better not duck me, son. You better not duck me, son. Overall, it was a good fight, Muhammad. I want to thank you, obviously, for calling in. I want to thank everyone that did call in. This was just a quick little immediate reaction show. Thank you guys for tuning in. You know, um, whoever, uh, you know. We'll take, still take some last-minute calls if we could get a few. If not, remember to hit the thumbs up to help with the visibility of the show. Get this around. Let everybody know our post-fight reaction, our thoughts on what exactly took place with uh, Chris Eubank getting a stoppage over Ren Reginald Quillen, now becoming the IBO champion, calling out James DeGale. He wants the rest of those teeth. He wants Gennady Golovkin. He thinks that ITV is the platform that can entice those big names, those big fights. Let's see if this guy, with all this pedigree that he has, I mean, he has the name and the blood, which gives him that pedigree. He's looking the part. The question is, 
can he look as good as he's looking versus the levels of Nick Blackwell and Reginald Quinlan and, and Tom Doran, you know, when he's in there with a James DeGale, you know, can is that possible? Is is he going to be able to look as good as he did tonight versus De, DeGale or, or, you know, anybody in that division? We actually got another call we're going to get to here. M Stacks, talk to me, brother. Hello. Yes, sir. Oh man, I was asking about that Tiger stream, man. I got I got your link up here, and I was thinking about getting it, man. Did you get to see that fight? Because I was having a hard time watching that fight with the fire stick. I sure did get to see it, man. That's what we're doing in the media reaction show on now. We actually closing it up. That means you didn't get to see it. I'm gonna throw this music back on M Stack. You can catch the play. <laughs> You can catch the show on the, uh, you know, playback. But, yeah, man, get your Tiger Stream on. Hashtag Tiger Stream. If you want to get $75 off, you could always use the Boxing Voice coupon code. Spell it just the way we do. T-H-A-B-O-X-I-N-G-V-O-I-C-E. I am your host, Nesta Gibbs. I hope you enjoyed this show. And if you want to interact with me, you can catch me, obviously, on Patreon. It's like, a, you know, <laughs> I answer quicker than anything on Patreon. But you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at NestGTO. And if you're looking for more exclusive, some behind-the-scenes footage of all the good stuff that happened in Alabama when me and the team went to Alabama to Tuscaloosa to visit the heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay Bomb Squad Wilder, we have Bomb Squad! obviously exclusive videos on our YouTube channel. So head on over to youtube.com forward slash the boxing voice for some great one-on-ones with Deontay and head on over to patreon.com forward slash the boxing voice for some great behind the scenes on Deontay, you know, and on uh, his trainer, both Jay Diaz and the Olympian, Mark Breland, you know, um, check them out, check them out. Listen, I want to thank everyone that tuned in. Um, we're going to be back. Obviously tomorrow is our regular scheduled day. So, uh, every Thursday and Sunday we're here, we're doing this. If you enjoy it, follow the movement, you know, it's definitely, uh, fun times around here. Join us every Thursday and Sunday live at 7 PM Eastern time. Have a good night.